So my wife had to wait, I mean, till she's, she's able to dial it, I mean, dial it and get to, her service get to 10 centimeter. And that took her about 36 hours. Man, I couldn't sleep for 36 hours, trust me. It's in two parts, basically, and um, each time I think about it, I think about two things. The stress and the money. You understand? Um, while uh, a lot of people might be concerned uh, about uh, the pain that the lady goes through by carrying the child for nine months, and they feel that, well, you're not carrying anything, I know that. But jokingly, I just tell them, well, but you guys chose to do it very quick. I mean, that's, I mean, to do it quickly. That's why you have to carry the baby for nine months. I've been carrying the child for like 30 something years. I mean, but I, I tried to spread it over that year, decades, so that it don't stress me. But that's on the lighter note, Sha. So my wife got pregnant. We had our first pregnancy, uh, which didn't result to a baby, to a child. Um, she carried that pregnancy for about five months. And, um, you know, at some point she began to see signs of blood and all that. So we, uh, we went to see our doctor, who's a gynecologist. Back then, we were still at Ogba. And um, uh, she saw her and make, made some recommendations, which we adhered to. And after a while, we began to see blood again. So we decided to go back to the hospital. And this time around, uh, what, this is what we started thinking about afterwards, that she should have just you know, run the test, we should do the scan, and we should know where we are going instead of just wasting about a week at the hospital. So they put her on admission and she was on admission for like a week and they were doing all the stuff and all that, going through all that. And later, uh, when we were about to be discharged, um, they decided to run a scan. And voila, the child is gone. And that's when the biggie started. So the child is gone and I was a bit angry. At some point we were asked to go and do confirmation tests somewhere because I didn't believe that with my child just go like that. Uh, the doctor said in case we don't believe what she has found out. I mean, how will I believe that? I've waited for five months, expecting that in four months. I mean, I've calculated the time. It was June. It was going to be around, was it? It was going to be in June. Yeah. And this was about around February 2000 and um 2007 my son will be three years now 2017 february yeah so we had to go for the confirmation uh test and scan and all that so they confirmed it and we went back to the hospital yeah we're here and um it's been confirmed and all that so we're told that they are not going to do evacuation that because the child is already formed that my wife will have to deliver the child as if she was going to deliver a baby it, and i mean i was like i was even thinking hey, that shouldn't be an issue of me so how are we going to do that we we should go through that pain and the doctor confirmed that yeah she will go through the normal labor pain that we have to endure so it started you know the picture started whatever my wife has started crying already i had to just <laughs> my wife is it's a very i mean I, I, I marry the best. I mean, she, she's a soft, cool. When she cries, I'm blackmailed. So I don't want her to cry at all. Whether the cry is intentional or unintentional, it's natural or whatever. I, that's how I feel about it. So I had to just, so I had to go on that emotional journey with her. So, and we're told that they had to evacuate it. And the reason why she had to give that to this child naturally is because the baby was already formed and she had, the baby had bones already. It's a he now, it's not a she. The baby had bones already and all that. And the doctor advised that if she said that she's going to go with the evacuation, that it's going to take a while. One, secondly, uh, they might damage the uterus or the womb in the process because the bone, while trying to bring the bones out and all that. So she had to give that to the child naturally and all that. So. We decided to do that so they inserted catheter and one ball like stuff like that i can't even remember what it is but the the she had to dial it for 10 centimeter which is the usual thing so my wife had to wait i mean till she's she's able to dial it she's able to dial it i mean dial it and get to a service get to 10 centimeter and that took her about 36 hours man 
I couldn't sleep for 36 hours, trust me, because she wasn't sleeping as well. And I couldn't stay with her in the labor world. They, they had to leave her alone and she had to press the bell anytime she feel uncomfortable and she's always feeling the stuff will leave her and come again, just like normal contraction that you get during pregnancy when you're about to deliver. And trust me, they were just pumping her with injections, giving her drugs just to be able to facilitate the what's it called. So she died there for 36 hours. And the, 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 the funny thing is, I mean, I, it's funny now when I think about it. The fact that, you know, when another doctor comes and take over, they will have to go back and check her, you know, deep down inside her. What's what? It's crazy though, but I couldn't just bear it. Because the thing is, the child we are expecting to come is not going to be alive, it's dead. And secondly, when I calculated how much we spent in the process, the first time she had to be admitted, the second time, all the stuff we have to buy, all those, all those, I realized we spent about 450,000 naira for a baby that we are not going to carry and cuddle. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even about the money for me, but I, I, I mean, the money thing paid me anyway. But I mean, that wasn't it. But the pain my wife had to go through for 36 hours. When we thank God it was over, uh, at around 36 hours, she, she gave birth to the child. I mean, to the, to the uh, I don't know what to call it now, uh, well, to the dead uh, fetus. And uh, when we checked the dead fetus, it was a boy. It was painful. Uh, but I mean, there's nothing we can do. We just had to let it be. And we tried to, we are told to run tests so that we know what is the reason, so that probably we'll be able to meditate against that. But at the time we checked how much that was going to cost us, close to about a hundred thousand. My wife just told me, guy, let's just forget it. How do I need to keep spending money on a dead child and all that? Well, we just believe. Well, that is wrong though, because thinking about it, we should know. So that, I mean, whatever we need to do, just to make sure that we are back it in the future. So we did that and that passed. So when we had the, the, the first miscarriage, yeah, I mean, I think that was what made my bill around 450. That was so crazy. Um, after she gave back to that fetus, that, de that fetus that was, I mean, the miscarriage, uh, whatever, they evacuated our womb for any remnants and all that. So we went back home. Then after a few days, so definitely she'll be using part because blood will still be coming out. Then after three days, or the blood was still coming out. They were quite heavy and all that and all that. So we went back to the hospital. And uh, the consultant this time around said that that means the evacuation was not properly done by the doctor that did it. So they had to evacuate her again. As in, at one point while they were doing the second one, when my wife made, you know, they, they induced, they gave her some injection so that she won't feel the pain or dread about, but she felt the pain at some point. I had to, I stood up, I went to the theater door and I was like, can I enter? I was almost going to run mad, but they had to calm me down and all that and all that. And, and, we, are, and we are good. So that was just the, uh, that was just the complications that actually came again after, after she has given back to the fetus. That was, and everything was cleared up and the, the, the route was cleared and all that. And she's okay. So basically that. But uh, what we're told now is that after we're giving back to our child, is that there's every likelihood that for every pregnancy, she will have to do cerclage because of her cervix that is quite weak. That she'll have to uh, get the cerclage on. And so we are, we are looking at that, preparing for that. God so good, we advise that we need to, you know, uh, keep on pumping because I mean at this point in time I was feeling that I should just leave her. I was telling her I would just leave her for like six months. I won't even touch her and all that. You know, I was doing all that. They were just looking at me. One elder one elderly man called me and the woman at some point said, just calm down, just give her like two weeks. Go back because she's very fertile now so that you can whatever. And um, we actually yeah we, we 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 did what they actually asked us to do and thank God Nine months after, that was December 2017, we had a, we had a son. But that's another journey entirely because, I mean, at some point during the pregnancy as well, she saw blood again. And where, this time around, we have moved to where we're staying currently. And we had an hospital that was very close to us, that was closer to us. And we had a relationship with the doctor, so all that. So the doctor said, um, 
I was stretching abortion again. And when they did the test and checked her, they realized that her cervix, the, the mouth of her cervix is very weak and they have to do, um, they have to do uh, what they call, um, what do we call it now? Seclage. So they have to close that mouth and tighten it, which they will remove when she is due. So we had the circlage, she had the circlage on and she, uh, she carried the child to full time about uh, 39 weeks. She actually walks to the hospital because she needs to exercise about 38 weeks. Yes, she's supposed to remove it, I think at 37 or there about a week and they removed it. So we walked about 38 weeks, more than 30, about 39 weeks. We just went back to the hospital. My, this child is not even doing anything as if he was ready to come. So the doctor just said, okay, well, so they will have to induce her again. So they did the, they induced her and um, this time around, wow, I had, I had some videos. I hope I missed, I will still be able to lay my hand on them. She gave me some beta, some beta, some beta abara on the back. I don't know if you call that slap again in English <laughs> on my back while well, during that process because I had to stay with her all through the process. And when she dilated up to seven centimeter, I think something just went wrong. She stopped dilating. And the doctor just said, this is a sign for CS. So we, we just had the CS done. We thank God we yielded uh, to the doctor's advice at that point because I would have lost another child at that point. Because by the time they brought out the baby, it was almost gone. Because while struggling to come out of the mother's womb, she had um, cord. His cord was already wrapped around his neck. You understand? And that was, that was crazy. And thinking about it, I was, the word I wanted to use, I realized I've been abused. She had some, he had some entanglement, you know, all around, all around his neck, but which is, was his court. So they had to bring him out, resuscitate him at some point. They had to just leave my wife at some point. About three doctors were my wife and the child. So, um, no, we have to do all that, all that. So now we have the child, we have the baby, and um, we thank God. So when we had the child again, and um, I think the doctor was, I think about two days or so when we were about to be discharged, the doctor, the third, we were supposed to be discharged on the third day. So the doctor uh, checked the, I think they checked the bilirubin level, that's what they call it, of the, of the child, of my son. And the doctor was like, he's not sure if it is high or not until we conduct the test. The, but he will want us to conduct a test and he want to refer us to, um, I think the thing is, when we did it, we actually did the test, we ran the test, but she, he realized that the test, the, the level wasn't so high, is what can be managed, but the temperature of the baby was too high. At that point, my child, at three days old, a three-day-old child whose temperature is about, was it about 36, 37? Or was it 38? It was so crazy. So we were referred to Lassu. So we spent another one week at Lassu people of God. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. And that was also crazy. Because you know, when you go to any teaching hospital, they will do everything to check everywhere. Because when they checked it, when we, we also ran tests, they want us to run, another, to run another test. So we ran tests. And when the consultant that last week saw it, he was like, this is small now. So why are you bringing the child there? You just put him under the sun. The child will be okay. But when she saw the temperature, 38, Say, I'm sorry, I can't leave this baby. Just go and get her, just go and get him a bed. So they got they got him a bed and where because it was so small that it was supposed to be in the neonatal world, but because there was no space in the neonatal world, they had to put him in the child emergency or there about ward. So they put him there for what was it called? And they ran a series of tests. There was a particular test they ran, I think for meningitis. They had to get the sample, fluid sample from his spine. And they had to bend my child. My wife couldn't wait. In fact, I had to sign uh, a consent form before they could do that, before they can, do, before they can take that sample. So they, they took that sample and uh, we took it to the lab, they checked it, and when we brought it back, the doctor saw it, and the doctor was like, this is not the test he actually asked them to run, that they were supposed to run another test, and he asked them to go back to the lab, that they should run that same test, another test that she really needed for that. And the people there say that they can't use the same sample, they have to take another sample and the doctor said fine i'm not taking any other sample so that sample is very risky that she actually asked me to because they were trying to take it like three times 
the, when they bend the guy, it was crazy. My wife couldn't just stay there. And my wife at some point, because they said that the mother of the child must stay with the child, her leg was, swol- was swollen. I know that we had to I tell I, I carried her by Agidi by four. That man, don't stay here. Let your younger sister stay here. Let's go home. You need to rest. You need to sleep. Let them give the child the uh, milk and all that. So we we did that. So, you know, and yes, the other, uh, uh, the, the, the different uh, experience we've had during the process stressed me. But I, I can't say that it stressed me as much as this general hospital, um, the teaching hospital, because they will ask you to run, di- we ran different series, different kind of tests. I mean, because they just want tests from me. And I understand them, actually, because they need to ensure they get to the root of everything. But you know, where the child was very, the, the, I think she, it was in the third floor or so, I will have to go through the third floor, up and down, like I can say I run through that for like 30 times daily. And the child was there for like seven days. So going to one, uh, whatever that is outside the, the hospital, going to run tests, coming back, doing all that. Then after two days, I think there was now space at the new Nata ward. And at the new Nata ward, one of the things I respect so much about that word is, once the child is there, nobody stays with the child except for the nurses. And if the mother is about to go in to go and meet the child, you wear one overall, you wear different, you pull your slippers at the door, you wear overall, you put, it's, they are strict with the, with hygiene and all that in that place. Because I said, all the kids there are so very young and they can pick up any, uh, any um, infection if uh, hygiene is not in place. Even I as a father, I couldn't see my son for like three or four days because you won't be permitted to go there except for the mother. And the mother will be going there every three, three hours to breastfeed the baby and all that. So that was it. So we brought the child back home and um, trust me, there's nothing as beautiful as having a healthy child. Yes, I've had to go to the hospital a few times at the middle of the night when it starts, <laughs> start when, the, when the temperature rises, we quickly go to hospital 1 a.m., 2 a.m. But we thank God that we have beautiful, good doctors at the hospital, the private hospital we use in our area and that is very close to us, so we just go to the hospital and back. But trust me, if my son is awake for eight hours, is eight hours of activity. He's, he's so strong. I mean, you just be tired. However strong you think you are, you can't compete, you can't just deal. He's strong, he's smart, he's sharp. And uh, when <laughs> myself and the mother look at him sometimes, I say, wow, man, see this guy and all that. And when we are talking about maybe having the next one, we actually plan to have the next one once the guy is two. But I, I mean, I was, me, I, we, we, did, we didn't just think about it when that time uh, came because we were busy, I was busy with work. She was also busy with her own business and all that. Then when we sat to actually discuss it, that what's up now? So we'll do the next one. You know that people will have been, a lot of people will have been giving me, disturbing you after the guys yelled. When you are not the one paying for everything, school fees and the rest. So when we decided to do it, eventually, she was just ready. She just told me, let's, let's just do whatever we need to do. And we just know we don't close shop. Like she's always putting it. So <clears throat> we had the next one. Funny enough, the joy of having a very active child, beautiful, uh, <clears throat> a very wonderful child, make you just forget everything suddenly. I, I can't even remember anything. Even my wife. Like your bad people always put it, they'll say, a lot of feed that they see. You understand? <clears throat> so it's, uh, uh, but I mean, except when she looked at the point of incision where she was, when they caught her for the, uh, the CS. And um, I think we, we, but before now, we, <clears throat> a lot of people we pray for us before she gave birth that, ah, uh, where, you know, in Yoruba language, say, where, you know, we used to, they, they make it sound as if to do CS is, is something wrong, is all that. But we've agreed within ourselves, man. The next time, I don't think I want you to slap me like way, the way you slapped me the last time. I don't think I want you to go through that stress. And she said she doesn't even want to go through that stress. When she's ready, we walk to the hospital by the grace of God. They bring out the child. The mother is fine. We are okay. So, but I mean, so we tried again and she, she had the miscarriage as well recently. And, um, but that wasn't as mature as the first one. So it was, and we are also with a very good doctor right now. And he was just given some drugs and everything just 
well out of her and I mean and that was it but I mean we are ready to try again and I, I can tell you that all all the pain and the stress we actually went through because we are quite close um, uh, yes she's the one carrying the pregnancy but trust me like they always put it say the 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 person who is actually sick is the one taking care of the sick you understand because you you, you think you I, I'm just there I, I won't leave my wife with anyone to take care of for me I can leave my son for somebody to take care of him for me I mean if to stay with him in, at the hospital but when it comes to my wife because my wife is quite peculiar in her person she won't talk they won't, and people won't be able to read her. And even if she talk, sometimes you look as if she's lady, but she's not, it's just a person. So I'll, so we always go through it together. Although I might not feel the pain personally, but I feel it in my brain and in my pocket. You know, for real, you understand? So that's just, but I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful journey so far. My son is two years and, uh, two years and seven months, yes, this time, and we, we, we are open for, for the, we are ready and we are open for the next one, God willing.